I think I really found myself in going to Camp Tawanga, and that really brought the awareness in Judaism to show that it was possible, that it wasn't only gonna be inside in the shul. And it was like, wow, you can actually be spiritual outside. It was the first time I had seen Adama, the Farming Fellowship. I was so incredibly blown away by the community. The most powerful thing about these things is the way we create community around Judaism through this food and outdoor education and my Judaism has deepened and given me the opportunity to feel that I can be authentically Jewish in a way that's meaningful to me without the structure that I was told or that we are still telling people is what authentic Judaism looks like. We had two fabulous previous trips to Israel, but those trips we visited places. This trip, which impacted me the most, was we, we were part of Israel. The very first activity, putting our hands in the dirt and picking those onions, it really it, it got Israel into my soul. I think we've seen very clearly over the last 10 or a dozen years that three huge new vertical doorways to Jewish life have opened up through the outdoors, through food, and through the environment. And We've said vertical doorways because many people may not be interested in the outdoors or food or the environment, but the people who are, it spans all the other interesting differences in our communities, young and old, East Coast, West Coast, Orthodox, Reform, unaffiliated. What we're trying to do right now is to learn the different ways that Joffe programs have had impact around the country and to start to think about how we could take these programs to scale to really, really renew Jewish life and genuinely to help the Jewish community play some role in creating a better world for everybody. Judaism just never provided anything that woke me up. Urban Anama helped me, or taught me, that this tradition of reapproaching and renewing and making Judaism relevant to you is like part of it and that was really exciting. So I would like to learn more and feel like I have a little more ownership and ability to share teachings with other people the way they've been shared so beautifully with me. I came to Adama and here I was bending and I was lifting and I was hoisting and I was growing things and eating the fruit and I was connecting the food blessings to the overwhelming gratitude I felt for what I was actually experiencing day to day and to then realize actually the Jewish tradition has a vocabulary for saying wow and saying thank you and it's there and, and I want to tap into that. The 2008 food conference, which was a huge catalyst for me. We came home from that so charged up and had this meeting in our house. We just invited all these people in the Jewish community that we knew and said, this thing is happening. We have to be a part of this. Six years ago, nobody knew what a CSA was in the Jewish community. And now if, you, if your shul doesn't have one, it's kind of like, oh, we, we should get one of those. The Jewish Greening Fellowship has really helped us to understand our core values and commitment to sustainability and to reach the larger Y community. And we've done so much uh, over the last few years as a result of this. Everything from hosting a 500 person green fair to launching composting in 2013. Uh, that began with one of our members who was willing to make a grant to us. So when I arrived at KMSA Israel five years ago, it was a nice community. Uh, a community that was deeply invested in Jewish learning, um, a committee that uh, is deeply invested in social justice. Uh, fast forward five years, we are a energetic, dynamic community who has a focus around food justice and sustainability. It's brought in uh, more uh, members to the community. It's deeply engaged our core membership to the point where uh, people are much more active, people are much more engaged, people are giving to the community in ways that they haven't uh, given in terms of uh, their time, in terms of their finances, in terms of their spirit, and uh, it's, it's really put us on the map um, in another century for being a progressive uh, leader in the Reformed Jewish community. The Israel ride was one of the most transformative experiences I've ever had, and it was a really fantastic way to see Israel a way I've never seen Israel before or since from the saddle of my bicycle. But I'll never forget coming into Mitzpeh Ramon and knowing that Shabbat was coming, remembering the incredible spirituality uh, of uh, Kabbalat Shabbat. I still can't quite put my finger on it, um, but I'm convinced absolutely that there's something going on and that we in the so-called established organized Jewish community need to pay more attention to what's happening with young adults and their willingness to really get out 
to the world, to Jewish farming, to, to cycling and environmental education. My folks uh, came to visit me um, at the second food conference in 2007 right here and really they were blown away with the young Jewish energy that was here and that's really I think why my folks have remained involved. We started a farm next to our family business, an envelope factory, and so we have Pushing the Envelope Farm and we've brought day schools out. We've gone into pretty orthodox schools, brought chickens in and done matzah workshops and we used the farm as an educational grounds. I saw a young girl at a day school program and she held up an onion and she said to the teacher, I know what I want to be now in life. And the teacher said, what, what? And she said, an onion farmer. You know, and I knew she wasn't going to be an onion farmer, but you know, she had touched the earth and she had come to our Jewish farm and she had spent a Shabbat there and it was absolutely transformative and it was beautiful. Our farm and the education we do there gives a whole new way for people to think about their identity as Jews. I worked with the third grade in our day school and created a gardening curriculum and uh, to see these third graders transformed just by like pulling a worm off a tomato and then understanding that what they're doing is protecting that tomato not for their own consumption but for the consumption of another human being. It's really powerful understanding it. Netia, which is this network of 35 institutions across LA, are grabbing these other two groups. So one of them are these people that have never been affiliated before. And then the other group, people who came up through the camps and schools and then they go off and literally told me the shul that I grew up in would never be the shul that I would want to join as an adult. And through these food programs, um, a lot of them are feeling rekindled and maybe they could create the synagogue or recreate or refresh the synagogue that they grew up in, in their own image. As we added a children's garden, where our early childhood center has really used it as an educational opportunity for both children and families, uh, extended that to camps, so elementary school students are participating. And then we've done a lot of work with young professionals, and we've seen that people who would otherwise not be engaged are finding ways in which Jaffe education or Jaffe material is connecting them to the Jewish community and really connecting to their values more than anything else. We have uh, hundreds if not thousands of volunteers that come every year onto the property and everything from planting to tending to harvesting is done by volunteers of all ages, Jewish and not, um, a lot of kids and families. The farm businesses have grown, have grown to have a, a, you know, a significant farm, six acres of vegetables, another four acres of pasture, an organic kosher goat dairy. I'd say the core of that hasn't changed, except we've gotten much better at using productive communal labor as a way of teaching and learning everything from basic Judaism, the basic spiritual experience of awe and gratitude, to confidence building, leadership development, community building, all that. And that has been with only 25 to 28 fellows participating a year. Imagine if there were 50, imagine if there were 100 alumni doing their work, carrying that work in the Jewish community. Imagine if we had an alumni network that can support the professional growth of all these young people, a tremendous amount of potential, leaving it empowered and inspired by the experience that they've had. The opportunities we have professionally are sort of capped in a short-term framework because of professional development opportunities, because of career longevity. The trajectory doesn't exist. It actually feels crummy because it felt like I'm a Jewish educator. Here are my peers who are Jewish educators in day schools. They're making two or three times as much money as me. and we're like on the cover of the Jewish newspaper is the most exciting and innovative thing. Everybody needs to send their kids to Pearlstone to this farm, but it doesn't seem like you value us. And I hate it to be about money. It's like, it's the antithesis to why I want to do this work, but I also want to have a family. I want to be able to own a house, maybe. I want to have health insurance. And if those things aren't feasible, then these like really amazing people that spend two or three years doing this, they have to leave. And then we have to start over again. And I don't know where we can get to if that's the model. Jaffe programs bring Jewish tradition to life and relevance in incredibly powerful and profound ways. It's amazing to see the impact that these programs are having on kids, young adults, people of all ages and backgrounds.
We're incredibly grateful to all of the people who are doing this work all over the country and who have supported it and are funding it. It's both a consequence of tremendous changes in American Jewish life and it's driving further change in the future. I really hope that together we can genuinely create a healthier and a more sustainable Jewish community and a better world for everyone.